So welcome to this review of our Swift Contiki Sport 574. Now we've had this motor home for about two years. It's a model they don't do anymore. And uh, so if you're in the market for a used Swift Contiki Sport 574, or in fact any of the other Swift Contiki Sport models, then this is probably the video for you. <laughs> Excuse our poppy. <laughs> Come on, you sit down. Good girl. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you around the van and we're going to tell you the things we like. Yeah, the things we don't like so much, the things we love and what went wrong during the two years and what and got fixed. Yeah, and, and you're going to give us a breakdown of I'm all gonna the give costs. I'm going to give a breakdown of all the costs. So. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. So I hope you find it interesting. If you do, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications icon, and you'll get updates when we release other videos. And we've done about a thousand and something and videos, videos now. now yes. <laughs> so, so if this is the first time on your channel, uh, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this video. Right, Pops. I'm just going to go outside and show them around. Yeah, so this is based on a Fiat Ducato 150 brake horsepower engine. It's a Euro 6B engine, uh, so it will be okay for a lot of those emission zones that you tend to get, particularly in London. Like I say, it's a 150 brake horsepower engine, a 2.3 litre diesel with alloy wheels. These are 16 inch alloy wheels. I fitted mud guards to it. Let's have a look around the side here. First thing you come across, this is your water filling point. It's got a lockable cap on it. And this works for the fresh water and flushing the toilet. This little thing here, try if I open. That's your 12 volt socket for operating a pump, so you can fill it from an aqua roll. That's the vent for the Audi heating. This is actually a locker. It looks like a gas, gas locker, but it's not actually a gas locker. I think in a previous life it was a gas locker. This is where you can put things like the arm for your aqua roll. But in, the, in here you can see I've got electric. Uh, I've got the water hose, the flat water hose. I've got a spare diesel filler cap and loads of rubbish in there. It's quite a handy little locker. And I've got my TV aerial lead as well. That's your mains 230 volt input. And also in there, you've got a lead for an external TV point. So if you come across sites that've got booster aerials, you can connect it to that. Under here, you've got an under sill locker. I think these used to be called beanie lockers. It's more, it's like a wet locker really. And what you, I keep in here are, is my pump for filling it. That's the connection that goes over there. So it's got a high flow pump. And I've got a connector on here that I use to connect the water point. I'll see if I can dig a video out for that. Also in there, I've got waste pipes and I've got the fresh water filling pipe as well. Your collapse pipes. No, and my well, collapse yeah. pipes, yeah, these are very useful. There's two keys for locking, this one just for that locker and this one for everything else. This locker gives you access to the underbed storage area. We've got Poppy's crate in there at the moment, but normally we've put the 
awning in there, the, the drive-away awning, and the chairs, they, they fit all in there. These, lock, these locks are always pretty secure, you just turn them that way until they click. Oh. Try to make sure the handle's down before you click it. Clicks. Clicks. This is a bit of an unusual locker. But, uh, I suppose if you're skiing, it goes all the way up there. So you could put something tall in there. This is where your toilet is. So I've got a bag for the electric cable, bits and bobs, toilet cassette, and you can and you can see there we've got space for other stuff, windscreen washer fluid, that sort of stuff. Has a little shelf there. I don't really know what the purpose of that is. <laughs> I suppose it's useful, but it feels a little bit weak for putting anything heavy on. This is a magnetic catch, which is really, really difficult to undo. Great big magnet there. I don't know what they were thinking when they put that <laughs> size magnet on it. And what's wrong with a little, little clip? Okay, round the back. We've, we've had a tow bar fitted, so we can tow a little car behind us. It's got a bike rack, fixing points, and rear twin cameras. One is for close vision, for looking down at the ground, and the other is for seeing behind, much like a rear view camera. Well, it is a rear view camera. Hmm. That's why it's much like one. <laughs> this door is access to the other underbed locker. And in there at the moment, I've got my waste master. And it goes quite a way back, as you can see. Perhaps you can't see. <laughs> I'll show you that when we get back inside. Two fridge vents, so you can see this is quite a it's quite a tall fridge. So that's the lets the heat out and that lets the heat in. Quite a nice hartel door with a bin on it. It's not very wide and it doesn't open too far, and there's a reason for that. Well, I find myself I'm often brushing against that one going in. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not too narrow. No. <laughs> and the reason for that is this locker here. Okay. And that's your gas locker. There's space in there for, I think, for 11 kilogram bottles. I've got two six kilogram gas bottles in there. It comes with a Truma CS. Uh, crash protection system so you can use the gas for heating when you're going along but the reason for this door the reason for this door not opening all the way is whatever genius thought of putting the locker there <laughs> yep, bash on the door yeah because yeah, the original models bad. were actually bashing on the door it's, yes so it's a good what, two three inches away from the door now but they went all the way back previously yeah, because they moved the gas locker, didn't they, from yeah. around the other side? Yeah. Yeah. So this is your diesel filler cap. Stop. Diesel. Remember. Diesel. Some genius thought it was a really good idea and they sent me this thing to stop me filling it up with petrol, petrol yeah. which I did once. 
<laughs> Gosh, they out now. Got stickers as well. <laughs> yeah, so there's your diesel filler cap. Yeah. Um, it's not an ad blue diesel engine. There is a space there for an ad blue cap, but this was prior to the vehicle becoming an ad blue. So that you may think that has advantages. I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the cab. Fold out mirrors. I fitted uh, these are Malenko uh, mirror protectors, and they've saved our mirrors a couple of times now. So if you can get some, well worth doing. Other makes are available. I just fold them back to hold the tailor-made thermal screen in place. I mean, just looking up at the roof a little bit, it has got a really good sunroof on it. That opens wide, I'll perhaps show you that when we get inside, and uh, it, there's no noise from that sunroof. And just going back to the wheels, the tyres are Michelin Agilis tyres fitted as standard. Um, they're not bad tyres, but they are starting to wear. We've done just 12, about, uh, over 12,000. 12,000 miles, and there's a little bit of wear starting to show on them. We've got uh, locking wheel nuts fitted. They're, they weren't standard, so I have fitted those. And I've got a tyre PAL system fitted, and there are videos on both of those. So let's go inside and have a look. No, Pops, do you mind if we come in? Wipe my feet. Right, so this is the sunroof. There's two, two catches here. One there, one there. Go back a bit. <laughs> yeah, don't fall off. I'm going to fall off and go back. Go on, just step down. That's it. And there. And there's a winder handle here. You have to get a little push. And that gives a really big opening. You carry on winding it forever, it seems like. And that lets in loads of fresh air which in daylight today is not too bad, even in the winter. But it does actually mean that you can stand up in the cab. If yeah. I come forward, Good. this is the problem. The first problem we sort of notice with this motor is the headroom. So I'm, I'm just under six foot and I'm touching the roof here with the head bowed. You do get used to it, but it does lead on to the first of our problems with the motor. And that is these cupboards. This cupboard in particular hits this surround when you open it, and it means that it shuts before, you've got just before you can get whatever. So you have to hold so it. So I have to hold hand. it and then get out whatever you need to do. Yeah. It's, it's something you get used to, but it, I think it's poor design. Yeah. Is yeah. It? I mean, they've put this surround in here to include the speakers, lights, yeah. lights here. Yeah. 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 So it's a good idea, the surround, but it's not ideal in the this low profile van because that's what it is really, it is a low pro profile van. So the same goes for this one. Mm. And this one is okay. But that's yeah, it's what you want, that it stays, it stays open. Yeah. But this one... That hits it a bit as well. Which is a bit odd. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really figured that out. No. But that does stay up. That's yeah, it just stays about up because okay, it can go it? up far enough. But it does tap against this surround. This, yeah, and that one stays up and doesn't go anywhere near it. So figure that one out. No, okay, <laughs> it's beyond me. <laughs> so a couple of negatives about the van in general. When we bought this, it was plated at three thousand five hundred kilograms, and that gave us about two hundred kilograms payload, which, to be honest, is absolutely hopeless. Nicholas. That's right, yeah. Uh, so we had it upplated to 3,850, which gives us 626 kilograms of payload. But it does mean that you need a C1 license to drive it now. Yeah, yeah. But that's more than enough payload for us, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Isn't um, it? We, although we've never actually taken it to a Weybridge, we're sure that it's 
pretty work pretty good on payload. We don't carry a huge amount of stuff. We're not carrying mobility scooters or anything like that. Or so, bikes. Or, or bikes. Oh, eh? But uh, I think if you were, then you may need to think about a van on a, on a bigger chassis. And now that is one of the biggest drawbacks of this vehicle, that it's actually on a 3,850 kilogram chassis. The previous Bolero that we had was on a 4,250 kilogram chassis, which gave us nearly a thousand kilograms payload. So yeah. that was never an issue. issue. No, no. I honestly wish it was smaller um, because sometimes parking it is is a bit of a pain, isn't it? I mean, we parked it yesterday in a car park, but it was we were able to do that because it was overhanging the the grass area at the back. Yeah. Yes. Is it the is it the length of it or? The... Well, it's the length. It always is the length. Yeah, it's, to, it's trying to turn it round, isn't it? Yeah. When the length yeah. comes into the, it. The wheelbase is four point four meters, which is quite a long wheelbase. Plus, mm. you've got an overhang at the back, and the the back of the overhang over the back axle means that the back swings out as well. So you have got to be aware of that. Yeah. Having said that, it does give you an awful lot of space. Well, that's it. That's the, the compromise, isn't it? <laughs> so. Yeah. There's yeah. always going to be a compromise That's and right. we, we've compromised on we like the, the living space. The other thing to mention is that the sp suspension is a bit hard on this van. You do notice it crashing over bad potholes, everything seems to jump up in the air and I'm going to look into seeing if we can add a air assist suspension to it to help with that problem. It's got a tow bar fitted to it and it's got great towing ability. We tow a little up which weighs 850 kilograms. It does slow us down a little bit, but it, the flexibility of having that small car with us is just... Especially in the summer months, we're going to visit castles, yeah. city centres, things like that. You know, we, we go in the car. Yeah. So it's really Days out in the winter, I like taking the van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's like reverse caravan in a sort of... Some people, some, yeah, yeah, some people, it, so. it, it is. The other thing is with being able to tow the car is if one of them is going for a service... Yeah. The van can take the car for its service and you come back in the van. Yeah, or vice versa. Or vice versa, like you did last week. And yeah. that's a really handy thing to have. Yeah. The, the lockers outside are great. Uh, really, really handy to have. As they're easy to get in and out. Yeah, because otherwise you were always coming in and out with stuff, weren't you? Yeah. One yeah. other drawback is this van doesn't come as standard with an outside barbecue point. I kept saying I was going to have an outside barbecue point fitted, but to be honest... I don't think we. I mean, it's come a number of times we had one on our previous two vans, didn't we? And sometimes it's just too windy, <laughs> so we, you know, just blowing out all the time. Yeah. So I think, in a way, we've not that bothered now, no. are we? So we no. just come on to the cab area then. Yeah. So what's it like to drive? Well, it, it, the seats are really comfortable, and uh, obviously I've got them swivelled at the moment. So as if by magic. I'm now in the driving seat and this steering wheel it's adjustable for reach as up and down but not rake so it doesn't go that way. So it's quite truck like to drive. Uh, I don't mind that the seats are really comfortable on a long journey. Um, the gear lever is handily placed. I mean, most people who have ever driven a Fiat Ducato will know about the gear lever. It's, a, it's very easy to reach when you're driving. Uh, the seats are just for height up and down front and back. Um, they're just backrest and they've got a lumbar adjustment as well. So the seats are really excellent and very comfortable. And obviously when you've swiveled them uh, in the lounging area, they do make useful seats somewhere to put the dog. Yeah, somewhere for Poppy. Yeah. I mean, the, the controls, if you've, anyone's ever looked at a Fiat Ducato, are fairly easy. They're fairly straightforward. You've got a radio. Can you come around? Yeah. So you've got a radio. You've got your heating controls, your fan, and where you want your heating to be dire directed. It's got air conditioning. It's, it's manual air conditioning. It's not climate control air conditioning. You've got cup holders there, which, which we tend to fill with junk. You've got a little area down there for to put your phone, a little slot to put your phone. There's a USB point there you can connect your phone uh, to the... Um, radio? Does it connect to the radio? It doesn't, does it? 
phone phone does in the auxiliary thing. Yeah. Yeah. Shows how often we use that. Yeah. It does. <laughs> uh, the dashboard is quite clear. You've got speedo on the left and rev counter on the right and your fuel gauge and temperature gauge. Down here are some extra controls for adjusting the, the dashboard uh, menu items. We've got the tyre pal sensors up there, they just sort of sit on the top. We've added a Avtex Tura 2 sat navigation, sat nav, Mrs. Satnag we call her. And the other display over there is the other tyre pal which monitors the pressures when we're towing the car. There is a cool box. You can open it. There is a cool box there which keeps your drinks cool uh, by blowing the cooled air from the cab air conditioning onto it. You've got another shelf there. And you've got a locker. How much of this we can see. But we've got a locker down there and that's quite a deep locker. There are some pockets in the doors. You've got the window controls there and the heating controls. And it's got cab blinds. I've actually got the tailor-made thermal screen on it, but it has got Remis blinds and they go across and they join from the other side. And they are very useful when you're parked up for making sure no one can see in your van. It's obviously on the other side here. And they shut off that side as well. Sun visors. Now, the trouble with this sun visor is it unclips here, but when you go to turn it round, it sort of catches on the, on the blind. You can get it round there, but you'll sort of end up with it in that sort of position. So it's less than ideal. You've got all your facts and figures on the back of that, haven't you? Because we need to know how long we are and... Yeah, if you want to pause the video at this point, that is all the facts and figures on, on the vehicle. That's useful if it's a low bridge coming and... Yeah. We want to double check. And that's the thing about the sat-nav, that has all the dimensions of the vehicle in it. And it will warn us if we're approaching a low bridge or narrow. Uh, with restrictions or anything like that. So you can quickly check how high, how wide, and even if there's weight restrictions as well. So you can see the weight on this, the MTPLM as it's called, Maximum Technically Permitted Loaded, loaded Mass, I think it stands for, 3850. With 7.77 meters long. Yeah, so I really enjoyed driving this motorhome and have had recent experience of automatic. It would be great if it was automatic, but the automatic option on this when we looked at it was enormously expensive. I think it still is. Yeah. You've got radio controls here, volume up and down, and you've got telephone controls there. It's cruise control, left and right indicator, and wash wipe stalk on the other side. Right, strangely enough, I'm starting to review the lounge. And the first thing about the lounge is we've got a table. Huh? Let's see if we can do this. Right. Which is in the cupboard in the washroom. So to get the table out, you've got to go. Mm. <laughs> got to go back and fall over Poppy. Jenny's got to walk backwards. <laughs> this is where you need a gimbal. Is it? Yeah. All right. So then if you want to go that way. <laughs> yeah, because like, you can't sit down while the person puts the table up. No. I found, discovered that. So this is an enormous table. It's quite heavy. It's got a little fabric clip to hold it together. It's got these clips on it. You have to push that one, drop that one down, 
drop that one down. Oop. But having said that, once it's in place, it's a great place for yeah. four people to eat, isn't it? Yeah, and play games, uh, cards, whatever yeah, around rummy the table, cub. rummy cub. Yeah, but we've been spoiled, haven't we, with that with the table and that uh, Adamo that was a little table you could fold over. So we, yeah. we wished this had a table like that. Yeah, and th this table's good because you can take it outside. So when we've yes. got the drive away awning set up, we can put this outside and we can forget about it. That's right, yeah. It's just there and we can use it. But It's this time of year that we've fiddling about with that, aren't we? Yeah. And then you, when you've finished eating, the main thing you want, feel you want to do is get rid of this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. As soon as you finish, back into the washroom. So the first yeah. thing I want to mention, having got the table out of the way, is the position of this telly. <sighs> Whoever thought that was a good position for the telly? It's not even very good over here. No. I mean, if you had it sort of in front of that... You can move it. You can move it so it's in front of the window there, which means that you can sit... Sit here or there, I suppose. So you could sit there and watch it from there. But our previous motorhome had the telly up there, and as you can see, there's no space for the telly there. We could put it above where the co coat hooks are at the moment. <laughs> Couldn't we, Pops? But you bang your head. <coughs> you'd bang your head when you come in the door, I think. Yeah, and then you'd lose the coat hooks. Yeah. Which are really handy. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Poppy wants to be involved in the video. Yes. <coughs> you want to add your enough, bit, don't you? Enough, please, Poppy. Yeah, so that's one of the things I don't like about the, the lounge. So we moan yeah. quite a bit about the bad bits in the lounge. What are the good bits? Well, the, these two sofas, the fact that it's a nice social area, that's, that's why we, we went for two sofas, didn't we? Because we found the travel seats was awkward when you had people in because yeah. people were trapped behind the table and all this sort of thing. Yeah. So no, um, I really like the lounge. It's, you can... It's a nice place to be. The lighting's very nice. Yeah. You've got the sort of lights above the cupboards and the lights under the cupboards. And they are dimmable as well. We'll come on to that in a bit. Yeah. So then you, what you can, of course, do is you can shut off the bedroom. And you can, when you're in the bedroom, obviously you can shut off the washroom. Or someone can go in the bedroom yeah. and be quiet. Go yeah. to sleep or whatever, and you can shut the door and someone else can stay in here. Yeah, so it does create the separate areas. Yeah. And the lounge. You've got nice blinds, Remis blinds again, on both the windows, haven't you? Yeah. Which have got fly screens, so if you want to open the window... You've got... Fly screens on them. Bobby's always sticking her nose in the fly screen. Yep. You can have it halfway, the whole way. And those curtains are quite nice, aren't they? Quite. Uh, Do sometimes use the curtains, don't we? They're a little, they're a little bit of a um, decorative thing, but they are sometimes useful if you really want to shut the light out. So these LED lights in here are dimmable, aren't they? Yeah. You can you do it on there or you can do it on your app on your phone, can't you? Yeah, if you look on here, you can dim the lights. I've actually turned them on full because you get a bit of a strobe effect if you don't have them on full when I'm filming. But you can do that on the panel there or on the app. Yeah. Let me just show you on the app. Yeah, so if I go into the app on your phone, this is one of the things I really like. Yeah, the Swift, the Swift command, command system. system yeah. And I've got the remote features there. Oh, or the control panel. Let's go to the control panel. And it connects via Bluetooth to the panel I've just shown you. He hopes. Yeah, it's come up. There we are. So from there, you can control all the, all the features bar one 
of the van and this is one of the best things about it. Um, you can switch the pump on and off. You can switch the awning light on and off. It's a little bit delayed because it's working via Bluetooth. You can adjust the lighting. That's probably the best feature. You yeah. can dim the lights. You can switch the power on and off or you can check what's happening with your batteries. I really like this because it's so clear. Yeah. You can check your water levels. Having said that, that, wa that waste level always seems to be either full or empty. It doesn't seem to have an in-between. You can adjust the heating. Currently got it on manual. It has got a timer facility. So you can set it. Uh, it's a timer much like you've got at home. You can set different times. You can switch the heating on and off. Just heard it come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole vid series of videos on, on, on that, this. Yeah, but it's just so clear it's to just, use. Uh, yeah, and you can even adjust the fridge on there. Yep, so it's optimal at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like that. So I really like the Swift Command, Swift Command panel. Yeah. Just wanted to mention this down by the habitation door. This is a little shoe locker, which is quite handy. It was nicely thought out, somewhere to put your shoes and your slippers. I do need some new slippers though, don't I? Yeah. Right, so while we're in the lounge, what went wrong in the lounge that we had to get fixed? Right, first thing, I think the very first thing that went wrong was this LED strip under here stopped working and took it back to Todd's on the uh, first time I went back to get things fixed and they resoldered a wire. It then subsequently fell off <laughs> because it's a sticky back thing and they replaced that. Replaced the whole thing then, didn't they? That's right, replaced the whole line. Yeah, yeah. Right, so next thing that we noticed that went wrong was this cupboard door. You're right, Pops, so just open the cupboard door. It's got your treats in it, hasn't it? And what happened was that this here was all peeling off and it started peeling off. What they've done is they've replaced the cupboard doors under warranty and uh, this one was all right, but other cupboard doors around the van also started peeling. So I'm still in the process of getting them all replaced. Um, and it's a common problem, apparently. Yeah. I'm looking at Poppy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more interested. I'm still looking at the cupboards. But... Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, so on the subject, what's, what did go wrong was this solar regulator packed up and it was actually feeding through the full voltage from the solar panel to the batteries and that set up an alarm on the Swift Command system which brought an alarm up on my phone so they've changed that solar regulator. Yeah. And before I forget I'll just show you the solar panels and to do that we need to open the roof and you can see what's on the roof there so we've got a solar panel and over there we've got a TV aerial and obviously an opening sunroof. There is actually a front bed here and I think I've only actually used it once or twice. And Poppy wasn't very well. When well, Poppy wasn't very well and I had to sit up with, with you, didn't I Pops? But it's very easy to make up. The, the two sides of the bed just pull together. It's a bit of a cut off on it. That, that If you can imagine it goes sort of like that. But it's plenty wide enough and very comfortable. Didn't it take is. very long to put up, did it? Because no. you're not shuffling a load of different cushions about. No, that's it's right. It's fairly easy. There is an infill cushion and I don't think it really needs it. What happens, of course, is the back rest cushions just drop down. These cushions come forward. That back rest drops down, that comes forward. And it's very, like I say, very easy mm. to make up. Yeah. Good bed. Right, Poppy. Kitchen next. So what do we like about the kitchen? Well, what I like about it is that this is quite a nice area if it's clear of stuff. <laughs> if you keep it clear of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who are you looking at here? You, because so you often put things on here and I, I come to do the tea or something and yeah. I've got to put everything away, yeah. give you everything back in yeah. order to um, start doing anything. But if things are, if it's clear, yeah. it's great. Nice big sink. I mean, we've never 
succeeded in getting a bowl that's that fits. anywhere near the right size. No, it didn't come with a bowl, did it? No, no. no so the one, in, the, one in the Bailey we borrowed was actually probably closer to, to fitting. Yes, so yeah. We'll have to have a look on Prima, Prima Leisure's Just, website. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we've got a Tassimo on here at the moment. Yeah, you can um, fit the Tassimo and the toaster on that in that area, can't yeah, you? Yeah, because you've got two plugs. But uh, in, uh, sorry, go on. interestingly, they're both round that way, aren't they? Yeah, which is okay. Which is okay, yeah. yeah. It seems to work all right. It's a lovely splashback. Very rarely have that lined up or down. I mean, don't have it down, I mean. Um, the cooker. Four rings. It's a massive electric hot plate, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite. And that is really good. I tend it's to really use useful that quite to a use. bit. I and mean, we've had vans in the past where that's taken ages to heat anything, but that's quite efficient. What a, well, the only thing with this cooker is they move the ignition switch, so it, it used to the be middle, there. Yeah. So that sort of confuses me quite it's a okay few times. Okay, if you're left-handed, but yeah, I sometimes find that a little bit different. Yeah. So we've got a grill that we. To be honest, we don't use. We don't do we? use it. I don't think we've ever used it. No, I mean probably you would use it more off grid if you couldn't use your toaster. No, that's probably about the only time I have used it. Um, and then in here, I tend to just use one shelf. I think it only has only came with one, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it's nice. Cool. And they've got a storage down below. We keep trays and things, and you've got your gas things in there, haven't you? Gas thing. Oh yeah, there's uh, gas. No, um, no. No, not in there. All right. Okay. No, gas things are not in there. Right. They're okay. in this cupboard here. Okay. Forget that then. Okay. So this is a kitchen cupboard. Yeah, this is much better than the original thing we had in the Bolero, which was a carousel. And you can see it's quite packed. It's quite packed. I mean, we, we tended to put everything in this. Well, mm. our saucepans in there, haven't we? Yeah, so just pull it does that mean out. we've got to pull that out. Yeah. To get things, but. Kind of got used to that. We have got a cutlery drawer. Which is on a magnetic catch. Yeah. I added this handle because it's actually quite difficult to pull out. Yeah, because it didn't have anything, did it? You no. had to sort of get your hand underneath. Yeah, and yeah so you uh, you did that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, that's neat. my handle, that is. Yeah. To um, limit my DIY. <laughs> then uh, in here you've also got the thing that goes over the the sink. So, so that gives you a complete area. I tend to but make sure it's in place. I tend to use that, you know, when we made a meal and we're putting it on the plates, don't yeah. we? Yeah. So that's quite nice. Um, what else have we got in here? Yeah, that sort of slots. It's got its slot underneath to keep it in place. There is a drainer board that goes with this, isn't there? We've yeah, never we've used, never, never used, used it. it. What do we use? We use this dry mat. Put so if we're going to... Obviously, we have to make sure the hob is cool before we do it. Put that down, and then we put that on there, and we use that to dry yeah, things. To dry things. Yeah. Or you can put it over there if yeah. need be. If needs be. And there's just about enough space if you put the flap up there. Yeah. What do you think of the space in general? Is it enough? It's okay. Like I said at the beginning, it's okay if it's not cluttered with stuff, but I think it tends to become a bit of a dumping ground. This yeah. area, so you have to watch that. That yeah. you know, you put things away, but. No, the cooker's fine. Um, the microwave above the cooker, not not ideal, but um, I manage with it. It's quite an easy microwave to use. The original idea we had was the microwave was in the middle, wasn't there? There was a cupboard there and a cupboard there. Hmm. And I really, really struggled then to get things out of this cupboard. So what's it like now then? It's better. We um, took I still... the wire racks out, didn't we? Yeah, we left the one with the spare mugs at the side. So you've got a wire rack there for spare mugs. We've got a muggy, a video on that, would you believe, to put our mugs. And we just got these um, foam things to separate all the plates out so they're just stacked in there so they don't rattle. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, um, I can can reach this better. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's the problem I have with all the cupboards in there. What's that? Not being tall enough. Oh, right. So, I mean, I have to get used to <laughs> get things out or put things away if I can't. Yeah. Yeah. What's above you? What's above me is one of the great things. We had this in one of our previous vans, didn't we? We, we really missed fire. it. Yeah. yeah. 
and it's a, a fan. It's a little bit stiff. To... It gets a bit stiff there, but you've just got to turn that, and that opens the roof. And on here, you've got a fan. So you can have the air blowing out. We can have the air blowing in, and that's nice when it's really hot. Yeah, if I go that way around, I think yeah, you can see it. So that that's really nice, and the cooker itself has got a fan that comes on, hasn't it? Yeah. After it's been on for a while. Yeah. Because we didn't know where that was, did we, the first time it came? No, we wondered what it was. Yeah, <laughs> there's something gone wrong. No, I mean, if we talk about what went wrong, yeah. Initially, this catch wasn't done properly was well, it, it the catch wasn't working was it, it no. the, we're going along and so all of a sudden this door came open and everything fell out of there and we thought what earth's going on yeah what i discovered was that these hinges here were loose and the only way i could uh, get them to work and bear in mind we were away at the time was i took the existing screws out i put a couple of roll plugs in there and i screwed it in with some wood screws and it's been all right ever since ever since it's not come undone again but that was, you know, that was quite frightening. We could, everything fell out of there when we yeah. went around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, but no, since you fixed it, it's been fine. Anything else? Um, don't see anything else there. I mean, this side, this is a huge cupboard. I mean, it's got the TV aerial in it. You can get into this better than I can. I can just about reach it, I mean, yeah. I, I sort of struggle to see what's up the back there. Um, mm. We tend to use that for crisps and... Things like that, Put don't the we? Fire blanket and in there. kitchen towel. Yeah. Then below it is the fridge. Okay. Now, so what do we think of the fridge? What went wrong with it first? What went wrong with the fridge? The I think it was the hinge this side, wasn't it? If you didn't pre press it in at the bottom there, I don't think it was closing properly. No. Um, but now. But they fixed that, that fixed. under warranty, haven't they? Yeah. And it's a double door fridge. A double door fridge, which when I first saw this, we went to look at the. Baileys, I thought it's fantastic this. And yeah. I, I mean it is, if you're coming from the bedroom and you want to quickly get in the fridge, yeah. it's great, but it, on a huge fridge maybe. If the fridge better. was in the middle, you know, yeah. and it was out on its own, it would be a good idea. I, I don't dislike it, I mean no. it's, it's a nice, it makes, funny enough, it makes the appearance of the fridge look yeah. better, it's doesn't symmetrical. it? symmetrical. Yeah, that's perhaps it. <laughs> Um, disappointments with it. Um, this is a bit small. It's sm I think it's narrower than what we previously had. So it just about fits one loaf of bread, doesn't it? Yeah, the freezer compartment's tiny, really. Yeah. And then we've got the shelves are okay. I mean, we've they're managed to normally stack yeah, a load you can of see stuff they're, in. They're not that deep, though, are they? No, no. So it's not very deep and not very wide. So it is smaller than our previous fridge. What about this thing down here? This, this tray down this, that's okay. Yeah. yeah, just about everything ends up in that tray. It does, it? yeah, because well perhaps it's safer because it's down the bottom. Yeah, These right. are quite wide. I mean, um, I think you possibly could fit your box of wine in there. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, it seems much better since I fixed the door, I must yeah. say. Yeah. I think it's keeping its temperature better. So, come into the bedroom. So this is one of the reasons we bought the Motown, was the twin bed layout. So you've got a six foot two bed here. And I think the one you use is actually even longer. Yeah, six That's, foot five, isn't it? Yeah, and your, your, your feet end about here, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I end up with Poppy, so. Yeah, Poppy sometimes sleeps at that end, <laughs> doesn't she? Yeah. So, so tell me about the bedroom. Well, we've got these wardrobes that the light comes on. It has a little uh, magnetic switch type light and it's lit in there. So a lot of our clothes go in there. Yeah. A lot of our jumpers and things. Yeah. And um, a lot of junk goes at the bottom. So in your cupboard, you've got boots and things like that. You well, we've had no problems with, you know, the, the rail falling down. We've had that previously, haven't we? Where the, the rail jumps off. Yeah, we haven't had anything like that. It's, yeah. it's just nice and the light's good. We've got a locker each. Yep. That's good. We've got some stickers on here. Yep. I think I'm struggling done. with the Northerners on Tour sticker coming yeah. unstuck. I'll have to stick um, that down, probably. Uh, Desmond's Donders, yeah. Not ideal for stickers, there. No. Right, so here we've got, that's the main light, isn't yeah. it? 
um, that's the little light so look, we, down here. It took us ages to figure out what it is. It's actually this tiny light down here. And it's it doesn't look like much, but if you don't want to switch all the lights on, that's mm. a really good idea. Yeah, it's quite bright, you know, when you uh, use it at night, isn't it? Rather yeah. than switching this great big one on. And then you've got two USBs there. Yeah, what's that other thing over there? That's the temperature control, isn't it, for the heating? For the sensor, yeah. Yeah, sensor, I mean. Yeah. So what about the cupboards? They're not as big as we've had before, I don't They're think. They're not too deep. They're not they? too deep, no. I think no. that's the difference. And like you say, we've, we have had this problem with some of them with the Peeling. stuff coming off, so... Yeah. They've got to be replaced, haven't they? Yeah moment we haven't got any that have got anything coming off have we mm. that's sort of a, a cupboard for all the cleaning stuff and poppy's yeah. food yeah bizarrely enough there's a nice little shelf here a coffee shelf it's quite good and your light we've got a light each and we and a usb for charging but there you did that yeah you? I, I added them. these lights the original lights were dimmable lights but they didn't have a USB charging point on them. So I've added this one, which has got a USB charging point, both sides on it, and that is quite useful for charging up your phone, which you can then leave on that little shelf. Yeah. The beds are very comfortable. They've got duvalet mattresses, haven't they, on them anyway? Yeah, quite a thick mattress here, yeah. if you can see that. Then we've added uh, duvalets ourselves, haven't we, with yeah. a topper and... Yeah. It looks a bit of a mess, but it's extremely, extremely comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. So provided Poppy don't wake us up, we yeah. sleep very well, don't we? Yeah. And like I say, this is one of the best things about the motorhome, mm. isn't it? The twin mm. beds. Yeah. We are, when we were talking about anything that went wrong in here, apart from a bit of peeing in on the cupboards, we had a bit of trouble with the surround on this, didn't we? Yeah, it actually fell off. Yeah. 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 And uh, since replaced it. Yeah. And for some reason, it was hard to close this blind as well. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, Being fixed, isn't it? Let's in a fair bit of light. It's nice sometimes in the summer, isn't it? You yeah. look up and look at the stars. Look at the stars, yeah. 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 No, it's a lovely place to be, this bedroom. And because the, the added features, well, I mean, it came with a TV point and a place yeah. for a bracket, didn't yeah. it? So we put a little TV on there. Yeah, I quite like this little TV. We, mm. we tend to watch the little TV in the bedroom more than that big TV in the lounge. Yeah, we do. Because I can't, just can't get comfortable with, with it in that position. No, no. Uh, and, um, the lounge TV point is the, one of the disappointments and this is one of the, the little pleasures. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one of the nice things about this van is the storage under the beds. So if you can just demonstrate that for us. It's not easy when the bedding's on. No. You can't sort of let it go as it crushes down. No, and the reason for that is that these struts here, these gas struts are meant to hold the bed up, are not really strong enough to hold the bed up with all the bedding on it. Yeah, fine I, without it, aren't they? No problem at all without it. I keep saying I'm going to change those struts and I never really got round to it, to be perfectly honest. Um, but the problem, I think, is if I increase the strength of the struts that holds the bed up and it's like that, I think if we took the bedding off, it probably would be popping I up all the time. I think we had it the opposite way, way around last yeah. time. Yeah, bef before yeah. they were too strong and the, and the bed mm. kept shooting up. Yeah, that's right, it did. The other thing that's, that went wrong, and I'm not sure how well you can, you'll see this, but there is a, a wheel arch insulation cover there. It's like just a foam cover over the plastic wheel arch. And it was actually missing when we got the van. Missing on one side. Well, I wouldn't. We wouldn't have known unless because it was on that side. We thought, what's the difference here? Yeah, we know. It's black as well. <laughs> sure, so. it was black. We didn't really notice for quite a while. No. And then realised. I it, asked you why is why is that one different? Well, what we were finding was you were getting condensation on that wheel arch. That's right. That's how we yeah. discovered it. We, we it? noticed yeah. there was water underneath, and we thought, where's mm. the water coming from? And it was because the, this cover was missing. So yeah. they've replaced that under warranty. Right, we'll just take you into the washroom. Hard not to call this the bathroom. Oh no. <laughs> and this There's rear, no bath in here. Rear washrooms are becoming a bit of a rarity, aren't they? Especially in the Swift range, it seems. Yeah. 
yeah. We've got a really good size shower here. Um, the only thing I would say is the gap to get in it is a little bit narrow between that wooden bit and the shower door here is a little bit narrow. Once you're in there, there's plenty of room and we use this all the time. Mm. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, only thing I wish about it was it had another drain hole. Yeah, it's only got a single drain hole. Because some, sometimes you haven't got the level quite right, you know, it's, it's all building up at the back. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a huge mirror, haven't we? Yeah. Shelf that we don't tend to use because I was afraid of leaving something well, on there. Well, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What's the point of that? Got some cupboards, a big cupboard here, but it could do with um, a shelf, couldn't Not it? Not actual really? flow test, <laughs> isn't it? Proves we're doing them. Uh, yeah. So there's that, and then we've got another cupboard down here that's a bit. The cupboards are a bit of a mess, so I think that's. They're difficult yeah. to keep tidy. Yeah, I think what it really needs is some sort of organiser thing in there. We, we ought to talk to explorers and they can design something for us. Yeah, yeah. It's I always feel, try and keep them tidy, but then yeah. things get dumped in there. Yeah. Um, the big disappointment, I suppose, in here is is this sink, isn't it? Yeah, it's too narrow. Yeah. If I mean, if I'm having a shave, I like to sort of splash my face and if I do that, I get it everywhere. It goes, mm. it goes on the carpet, on down, runs down the side. Just not big enough. No, no, so that's a disappointment, but yeah. toilet area is fine. This is nice. We've got a heated heat, towel right? Yeah, we didn't have that before, heated towel right? And that's really warm at the moment. We've got this light in here, we've got a towel rail. Nice towel rail. And quite a nice roof. Yeah, which could open with, the With a fire bit. screen you have to across it. to close that before we set off. Yeah. Towel hooks there as well, somewhere to hang your coats. This is normally, I mean, you've got a thing that locks the shower door back out, plus a, a yeah, if you pull that strap. Out, you would just close oh, it. Oh, sorry. It closes like that. You can close it from the outside and from the inside, can't you? Yeah. Obviously, you need to close it when you're in there. And the shower door, when you're travelling, has got a little fabric strap with push button uh, attachments there to keep it in place. A couple of things went wrong in the washroom area. And the first one was, for some reason, and this has happened on a lot of Swift motorhomes and caravans, is the sealant that go, normally should be all, all the way around the shower, hadn't been finished off at the back of this panel. And what was happening was water was coming out of the shower and it was running along here and coming out there. And we noticed a sort of a puddle on the floor there. I thought, where's that coming from? Because when we traced it back, that's what we found. And they have taken this out and they've replaced the sealant. We've not had any problems with it since then. But if you are discovering water in your Swift Motor or Caravan, that's what it is. It's the seal behind this panel here. The other thing that happened, and this happened almost on the first it trip. It was on the first trip, yeah, yeah. Was that this toilet flush, if you want to do that to flush, um, it wouldn't stop flushing to start with. No, no. It was filling up, wasn't it, with water? Yeah. It was going permanently. Yeah. So uh, we, we couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then invent, we switched the power off, switched it back on obviously to stop the thing flushing, took the fuse out. And when you put it back, what happened then? It wouldn't flush at all. No, that's right. So, so what they did is that in, in the back here, underneath, and you can't see it with all the junk we've got in here, but underneath there, there's a solenoid valve. Uh, when you press that button, it opens the valve to let the water flush. And that had gone. You said it said it was very un unusual, didn't they? Yeah, I don't took think... it back, didn't we? Almost the next day, and it's very unusual. Yeah, <laughs> so a bit of an unusual fault. Finally, yeah. uh, let's talk about how much it cost us over this two years. And Jenny's right. done a spreadsheet she's put together from Mon uh, Money Tracker. Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, a category with Motome Five because there's a fifth Motome, and I've separate it in things like accessories and all that type of thing. Okay. So it goes that. back, so this is for two years, so yeah. we go back right to the beginning and we bought this van just before the um, Covid, didn't we? 
Yeah, yeah. we bought it in December uh, 2019. We had about two and a bit months out and about in it and uh, then we were into lockdown. Yeah, so our prices are before all the recent, you know, boom in, in things, aren't in they? In things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who didn't switch their phone off? You didn't. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, um, we, we paid £21,850 because we exchanged the Bolero yeah. um, towards the new one. Yeah. It was about 20,000 we put into it. Yeah. Um, then we obviously bought accessories. I mean, we will put this up on the screen. Um, the ones that sort of stand out is that we've spent £2,801.83 on accessories. Wow. <laughs> um, I think the, that includes the tow bar. Yeah. So we've got things like the tow bar with the big things. Um, this is Satnag, she was £339. Yeah. Uh, the silver screen was 175 and the tarpel was 268 yeah. And you spent £175 on no, nose killer. <laughs> noise killer. <laughs> nose killer. Yeah, and so there's various other things, you know, we bought the toaster, we, yeah. we bought all the other things that you have to buy, like toilet rolls, toilet cleaning fluid. So this is absolutely everything in here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then um, we've we've spent some money on t tunnel tolls, not as much as we'd have liked, ferries and things, and with some some of the ferries we never went on or whatever. So we still haven't gone. You on. know, some we haven't gone on. Yeah, six hundred and one pounds for that, and then the fuel is another big one. Yeah, the so fuel. We've, got, we've recorded all the fuel that we bought. Yeah, yeah, um, and I yeah. normally I put it into each project, so I know. Know how much we spent in Scotland and all that sort of thing, but anyway, the total was three thousand one hundred and eighty-two for Darn fuel it. over two years okay. to do twelve thousand odd miles. Yeah, so you okay, worked yeah. something clever out from that. Yeah. Then yeah. I wanted to record the gas because you've asked me, you know, how much are we spending on gas, and the only caveat to that is that on the odd occasion, I don't think it's happened very much these last two years. You've gone to the site office yeah. and you've bought uh, gas. In cash. Yeah. And the only place I can really remember you doing that was at Ludlow. Okay. Okay. So, so um, maybe one bottle missing. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the gas we've spent over the last two years is one hundred and twenty-eight pounds. So it's not a huge amount. No. No. Um, because we've if we've been on site, our heating is electric. Yeah. Yeah. You no. Know, so it's one of the cost advantages of stay, staying on a campsite. I know campsites yeah. are more expensive to stay on than uh, free camping. Yeah, so but, but, it's uh, but you don't use a lot of gas. We, we yeah. haven't been using a lot of gas. No. Um, then I've got uh, the habitation service. Now I wanted to wait until we had this year's one done. Yeah. Um, we've had two now. One was two hundred and five pounds. So we've had sorry, we've had two vehicle services and two habitation yeah. services. So you each time you I mean you've just recently showed it haven't you, yeah. in the film. That you've, you've taken it there for a couple of days and they've done both. Yeah. 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 So the habitation one previous year was two hundred and five, this year was two hundred and twenty. Yeah. We've got because we've got inflation and things. Now insurance and tracker, um we it's a little bit complicated because we we had a plan with the Blero, didn't we? We were paying monthly, and for, we carried for, for the insurance. For insurance, yeah. Yeah, so we covered carried that over to yeah. the new van. Yeah. So I've only really got the figure when we paid it annually. Yeah. Um, that's six hundred ninety nine. It was, yeah. and we yeah. paid and, that. And people, when I've, people have asked July. me how much my insurance is previously. They've said that's expensive. Uh, a lot of people pay three to four hundred pounds. I still think I'm suffering because I had a no, no fault claim when I hit some debris on a motorway in Belgium and claimed for the door. So I think I'm still penalised for that. For that, a bomb both the car and and the van, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I mean, I'm, I'm a, an old fogey, so I should be getting old fogey rates, really. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, uh, I'm getting dangerous driver rates. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. Um, so the other thing I've got in there is that each year we've taken out a subscription for the Sergeant Tracker, which is part of the Swift Command And thing. that's roughly been, what, £95? £95 a year. Yeah. 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 So that's all come to, I say it's complicated because it's brought forth from the Bolero, but it's 1167 over these two years okay. that we've paid. Okay. Had a load of meals out. 
And you've recorded all of those. I've recorded all the meals out. I won't go through a bore everyone with that, where where they all were. But how, about how much were they? Not not a lot. Oh no, sorry, that's the wrong all one. It, yeah. yeah, it's one thousand six hundred seventy-one. That's over two years. Okay. Because we okay. haven't tended to. Um, didn't do a lot in the well, pubs were shut, weren't they? So yeah. we couldn't have meals no. out. No. But um, you know, that's since then that's how much we've done. Been to various museums and entrance fees. Bear in mind we're in English Heritage and National Trust, so we don't ever pay to go in there, do no. we? No. Um obviously we've to pay yearly membership. Um but other places that we've been, like Blenheim Palace, two hundred and seventy six pounds we've spent. Yeah. Now the Next biggest one, and I've recorded all our nights away and whatever. Campsite fees. Campsite fees. Um, they were 4,792. Yeah, so, for, how, so how many nights? About 227. 227 yeah, nights. over two years. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then, because this sorts it in alphabetical order, the vehicle services we've had done at Todd's, first year £99.23, Second year, two hundred thirteen oh nine, because we now had a sil what they call a silver service. Yeah. And you said the oil was seventy pound on its own. On its own, yeah. They fit, they put some synthetic oil in there, which I believe is more expensive. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that basically is all our costs now. What we've what we've discovered is that. Well, you've discovered. Well, what I've discovered. <laughs> <laughs> by adding figures up yeah. is that because people have kindly watched our videos and watched yeah. the adverts and we're really grateful for all of this mm -hmm. we've been getting a, a, an income from YouTube yeah the, our other income was, is fixed it, you know your My pension, pension yeah, yeah. is just CPI or something yeah. the other money we've got is definitely fixed yeah so I think we would have struggled to do all these trips and tours yeah. We'd have really dug into our savings. As I said, we've spent 15000 over two years on, on all those things I've just listed. Mm -hmm. So that would have taken a big chunk out of our annual income and out of our savings. Mm. So we are really, really grateful how this YouTube money is built up. Yeah, just do that. Um, I don't oh. want to give out, give out the exact figure, but no. it's it has paid for... A lot of our trips. Yes, yeah, so we wouldn't be doing as many trips, we wouldn't be doing as many campsite reviews if we weren't getting an income from YouTube, and that's the honest truth. Yeah. Um, so we're really grateful for everyone who's subscribed, who's watched a video, who's suffered through all the in endless adverts. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but those, yeah. those adverts, which are an absolute pain, I know, um, they pay for us making these videos, and we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't getting that income. So we're really, really grateful for that. It means that we can enjoy ourselves and we can share our enjoyment mm. uh, of this motorhome, of these of campsites and the places we visit. So thank you very much yeah, from thank the you. bottom really, of our hearts. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. And the other mm. thing about, I think quite a few other YouTubers have mentioned it recently, is the community that sort of builds up between us. Yeah. You know, the, the, the meetups, and we watch each other's videos and try to encourage each other, and this sort of thing. As I, I would never thought that that's what would happen, you know, when we retired, but it's, no. it's given you a, a hobby and a real interest. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably be going absolutely bananas now. <laughs> I sat at home. Yeah. We, we've made friends, uh, YouTubers, we've made friends of people who watch us. Uh, we, we know people through their regular comments. We've met lots and lots of people. Uh, it's really, really broadened our horizons. Yeah. I think we'd be a miserable a couple in the awning, as someone once called <laughs> well, We've been called that recently. <laughs> yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we're really, really enjoying our retirement, and a lot of that is due to you. Yeah, so, mm, thank you. Okay, we say thank you very much, mm. and uh, onwards to 2022, and whatever yeah. that holds. Yeah, well, let's hope uh, we can avoid any further massive restrictions like we had last time. We're right on the cusp of uh, potential lockdown, I think, at the moment, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it does seem yeah. very worrying. Yeah. So, but uh, um, and we'll try, if, if the worst happens, we'll, we will try again to bring some sort of content, won't we? And probably mean I'll get my hair cut again. Even if it, it ends up you having a haircut video or you doing cooking 
baked beans in the van again. Oh or... my God. <laughs> <laughs> or an omelette. <laughs> <laughs> Might do an omelette. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes. I re what I really will try and bring you is I will cook a proper meal one day. Yeah. I uh, will I will show you that I can actually cook. Yes. Um, I, the honest truth is we f prefer not to cook when we're away, um, but uh, we will show you one day what we can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's so, a promise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know you said you'd cook it. So yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm quite happy with I'll that. I'll go out and get the spices and Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. It's a curry then. No. No, 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 no. it's not a curry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a curry. <laughs> yeah. 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 So thank you very much for watching this far. Yeah. This yes. video has probably gone on far too, too long. long. Yeah, yeah. Waffled again. Yeah. So uh so thanks for sticking with us. And if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Because that and really helps. That really yeah. helps. And if you don't know how to subscribe, leave a comment and I can point you at a video that tells you how you can subscribe. Yeah. Because if you subscribe, you get notifications to watch our video. And if you watch our video, that helps even more. Yeah, that's right. So have a great Christmas. This is the last video we're going to do. Apart from a throwback Thursday, which that'll be afterwards, won't it? After yeah, Christmas. That'll yeah. be after Christmas. Uh, yeah. But this is the last video we're going to do until after Christmas when we're going away uh, to a campsite in Cumbria. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll be bringing you that. So have a great Christmas and we'll talk to you after Christmas. Right. So Thanks happy again. Christmas and a Merry New Year. Yeah. I think that's right. Happy so I think it's the other way around. Merry Christmas and a happy new that's year. It. That's it. Right. That sounds right. I knew I'd get it right eventually. Yeah. So we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye then. Bye then.